Well, it's a new year and we have a lot of new stuff that we're going to learn at SCF Kids Online. In 2020, we started our journey through the Bible together and uh, we've met a lot of new characters and we've learned a lot about who God is over the last 40 weeks. And so today, we're going to launch in to the year 2021 and we're going to continue on with week 40. So let's get started and see what's coming up next. All right, does everybody have your supplies? You've got your tape, scissors, markers or crayons, and two pieces of paper. Okay, so your job during this activity is you are gonna follow after me. You're gonna copy what I do, okay? So first step we're gonna do is we're gonna take our two pieces of paper, we're gonna overlap them and tape them together as close as we can to the edge. Okay, so grab your tape and go ahead and do that now. One. I'm going to do mine in two pieces just so that I can get it in the right spot. Okay, so your paper should look something like this. If I ever get ahead of you, go ahead, feel free to pause the video until you catch up. Um, but I'll try and go slow enough that you can kind of follow after me, okay? So you've got paper that looks like this, okay? So the next step, I'm gonna get you to take your scissors 
Um, can anybody guess what we're doing, by the way? Any idea? Mm, probably not yet, but this next step might give you a good clue. So I'm gonna kind of hold this up so you can see what I'm doing, but you don't have to, you don't have to do it like this, but we're gonna cut triangles about halfway up into our piece of paper, okay? So we're just gonna go up and down, but you're not gonna go all the way down the bottom, okay? You're just gonna kind of make little mountains. That makes sense. Just keep doing that all the way across your paper till you get to the other side, okay? So go ahead, follow after me. I'm gonna set it down to do the rest because it's kind of hard to hold it up. Um, up and down we go. It's a race, guys. Who's, who's gonna get to the end before me? I've got a couple more mountains left to cut. We're actually, turns out we're making two of the same thing. Uh, any guesses now what we might be doing? <laughs> That's right, we are making a crown, okay? So the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take our markers or crayons uh, and we're just gonna decorate our crown. You can put jewels on it, you can decorate it however you want. I'm gonna throw some music up uh, on the screen for you so you can kind of sing along while you decorate take a few minutes decorate your crown and I'll be right back with you got your crown all decorated up. This is what mine looks like. Had some jewels on there. The next step that we're gonna do is we're gonna try and fit it on our head. Now, I'm hoping your head's a little bit smaller than mine because the two pieces of paper, I gotta have it right at the edge to get it over all of my hair. Um, but test it around your head and you're gonna tape it however, whatever size that you need so that it fits you. I gotta tape mine as close as I can to the edge so that it can fit on my head. You uh, tape it up now. Your crowns are looking beautiful. All right, what do you think? My hair will hold it on. Do you like it? Show me your crowns, you got them on your head? You guys did an awesome job at following my instructions and copying my every move. And actually in our Bible story today, those Israelites, they wanted to copy the nations around them. All of the nations that lived around the Israelites, they had kings as their leaders, okay? 
And the Israelites kind of were whining and complaining that they wanted an earthly king. Um, they wanted one too. And so they got a king, but it didn't end up so well for them. So check this out. Samuel was a judge over Israel. At this time, Israel had no king. But the leaders of Israel said, we want a king like the nations around us. Samuel wasn't sure how to respond, so he prayed to God. God said, give them what they want, but warn them what it will be like to have an earthly king. A king could make their sons serve in the army. He could make their daughters work for him. Or he could take away their fields and servants. But the Israelites didn't care. Give us a king, they said. God brought to Samuel a man named Saul. You will be king, Samuel said. Saul was surprised. He was from the tribe of Benjamin, the smallest tribe in Israel. Samuel anointed Saul, and the Spirit of God was with Saul. When the time came for Samuel to introduce the Israelites to their new king, no one could find Saul. God said, there he is among the supplies. Oh no! The people ran to Saul. Long live the king, they said. The Israelites thought Saul would be a good king, but Saul did not obey God. One day, Saul took an army to fight the Philistines, but the Philistines had more chariots, more horses, and more soldiers. Saul wanted to ask God for help. Maybe if he made an offering to God, they would win the battle. There was one problem. Only the priests, like Samuel, were allowed to give offerings to God. Saul waited, but Samuel did not come. Saul's soldiers started to leave, so Saul decided to make an offering to God himself. Then Samuel arrived. You have disobeyed God, Samuel said. You will not be king much longer. God is going to find someone obedient to be king. Sometime later, the Israelites won a battle against the Amalekites. God wanted Saul to destroy everything, but Saul only destroyed the things he didn't want. God told Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king because he does not obey me. Samuel confronted Saul. I did obey God, Saul argued. I only saved the best animals to sacrifice to the Lord. Samuel asked, does God care more about obedience or sacrifices? You rejected his instruction. So God has rejected you as king. Saul admitted his sin and asked for forgiveness. Samuel said, God has taken away your kingship today and he will make someone else king. God intended for a heavenly king to rule over Israel, but the Israelites did not trust God's plan and wanted a king like the nations around them. God gave them a king, but Saul did not obey God. God had a plan to send his son, Jesus. King Jesus trusted and obeyed God perfectly and died so sinners could be forgiven and accepted. So, God's people, the Israelites, wanted a king like the nations that lived around them. The problem was, they didn't just want any king. They wanted a king, like I said, like the nations that lived around them. And those kings, they did not obey and worship the one true God. So God gives them a king, and his name was King Saul. And Saul did not obey God. And the Israelites rejected God as their king. So 
so sad. But God had a bigger plan than that. God had a plan to send Jesus as our king. And so over the next couple minutes, I'm going to put up on your screen a spot the difference. So there's, there's a picture of the Israelites getting this king that they longed for. And I want you to see if you can find all the differences between the two pictures. But while you do that, I want you to spend some time thinking about the leaders that God has placed in your life, whether that's um, a Sunday school teacher or your mom or dad, a grandma or grandpa, your teacher from school. There's lots of people in our lives that help lead us in the way that we should go. So I want you to spend a few minutes thinking about those as you play this little game called Spot the Difference. Hey there, I'm Pastor Brian, and it's time for questions from kids. Elijah from Bardstown, Kentucky asks, If Jesus is our true king, does that mean we don't have to listen to earthly leaders? You know, Elijah, I'm glad you recognize that, that Jesus is our true king. That's what we saw today in the Bible story when the Israelites wanted an earthly king, and that was their way of rejecting God as their king. And so it's important that we understand that God is ultimately our king, that he's given us Jesus, and he is our true leader. But God has also given us earthly leaders, earthly rulers. Uh, we have governments, we have police, we have teachers and so forth, others in authority over us. And all of these people are in authority based on God giving them authority. And so yes, God wants us to respect them. He wants us to obey our leaders. That's important because when we do that, we're showing that we obey and trust God who has given them to us. But there's one little wrinkle we have to be aware of, that we are to obey our earthly leaders as long as they obey God. There may be times when an earthly leader would tell us to do something that is disobeying God. And again, for us, that is very, very rare, but it can happen. And in a time like that, what we need to do is we need to pray about this first to make sure we are understanding the situation right, but then we are to choose to obey God rather than an earthly leader if, again, listen to this, if and only if that earthly leader tells us to do something that is not in obedience to God. So obey our leaders unless they tell us to do something that is disobeying God. And again, that's going to be rare if you ever experience that. So here's a question back for you. How does God being in control of our leaders help you respect them and obey them more? The Israelites, they 
whined and whined and whined some more because they wanted a king like the nations around them. And so God gave them a king. They gave them King Saul. And he had his issues, if you remember correctly. But today's memory verse game, we're going to use these mini crowns that have the words to the memory verse on them. And this here scepter. Now, it may look like the CN Tower, but use your imagination because it's actually my king's scepter today. And so I'm going to toss the crowns and try and get them onto my scepter. If I get them on, these words are coming out of your verse. It's going to make it harder for you. If I don't get very many on, it's going to be easier for you. So uh, yeah, it's a little game of me against you, but it'll be a lot of fun. Okay, so here we go. It's maybe going to be easy for you because it's hard for me to get these on here. There we go. I got one. I'm going to try to also not get them on the floor because now I have to go pick that up after. How are we doing, guys? We got three. Oh, so close. So we are taking out Jeremiah 10, 6, as well as no one and 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 your name <laughs> so let's give it a try lord there is no one like you you are great and your name is great and powerful jeremiah 10 6. okay so i picked up the one off the floor already and uh, we're going to give this round two see if we can get some more words out of this verse we've been doing this verse for a few weeks now so you should be pretty good at uh, remembering it. So we're also this time going to take out you are great and like you. All right, let's read it again. Lord, there is no one like you. You are great and your name is great and powerful. Jeremiah 10, 6. Okay, while you were reading that, I was collecting my crowns again. Let's do one final round. Oh, it might be staying the same, guys. I always seem to drop one at the back there. Oh, two more seems to be my go-to. We are taking out Lord as well as and powerful. So let's read it together one last time. Lord, there is no one like you. You are great, and your name is great and powerful. Jeremiah 10, 6. So like I said before, God's people wanted a king like the nations around them, and God gave them what they wanted. But God had a bigger plan. He had a plan that one day he was going to send Jesus, and Jesus is our king too. And so let's sing to this king, King Jesus, and worship him together now. So would you stand up on your feet, and we give God all the glory and all the praise. Yes. 
everybody. My name is Wyatt, and this is my good friend Watson. Say hi to everybody, Watson. Uh, hi. I guess. <sighs> okay. Um, is everything all right, buddy? Well, not especially. I'm a little upset, to be honest. And why is that? Well, I was walking past Old Man Jenkins' yard, and I looked up, and I saw this huge tree. And I said to myself, Self, you have to climb that tree. It looks so awesome. So I climbed all the way up Old Man Jenkins' tree, and when I got to the top, I was like, This is awesome! Dude, that sounds fantastic. So why are you upset? Oh. I'm just getting started. So I'm up at the top of the tree, and I realized something. You know what I realized? No. I can't get down. I was stuck at the top of the tree. Oh, oh, oh man, that, that, that sounds a little crazy. So what happened next? Oh, I'll tell you what happened next, Wyatt. I looked down from the top of the tree, and I saw... A ladder? No. That would have been better. I saw some bushes all the way on the ground. So I took a big deep breath and I jumped all the way down in the bushes. Oh, oh man, that, that one must have hurt. Uh, surprisingly, yes, it hurt quite a bit. But that's not even the worst part. How? How is that not the worst part? Okay, so get this. I'm laying there, minding my own business, when I hear this silly little hissing noise. It was a cat. And not just any cat. It was old man Jenkins' cat, Robert! Wait, his cat's name is Robert? Yeah, super weird, huh? And he's super mean, too. So I did the first thing I could think of to save myself. I used my karate, and I punched him in his little cat face! <coughs> it was awesome. Wait, you punched a cat in the face? Mm -hmm. But that still doesn't even explain why you're so upset. Oh, right, 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 yeah. So after I got out of the bushes, old man Jenkins comes running out of his house, and he's all like, I told you not to climb my tree. My bushes are ruined. And step away from my cat, Robert. Wait, so so you're telling me that old man Jenkins told you not to climb his tree before? Well, I, I, I mean, yes, but oh, it looked so fun. I just couldn't help it. All right, Watson, I, I know you were just trying to have fun, but you should listen to old man Jenkins anyways. I mean, after all, it is his yard and everything in it belongs to him. This is actually the same thing that we can see with Jesus. Well, okay, hold on, hold on. I hear you about old man Jenkins. You got a point, okay? I should listen to him because it's his yard and he owns everything in it. It's true, but I don't really see what this has to do with Jesus. I mean, I know Jesus was an amazing teacher and he had an awesome beard, but what does old man Jenkins have to do with Jesus? Well, it's not what old man Jenkins has to do with Jesus, but rather what Jesus has to do with everything. You see, we can look in the Bible to see exactly who Jesus is. We know from the beginning of the New Testament that Jesus is the Son of God and that He came to this earth to live a perfect life and to die for all of our sins. And this is how most people see Jesus, only as a teacher and a savior. Now, there's nothing wrong with this, but Jesus is so much more. In the last book of the Bible called Revelation, one of Jesus' disciples named John gets to see Jesus again. And in this book, we read about how Jesus was described. He's not described as a simple teacher, but rather as a king. <gasps> wait a second. Wait, 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 wait a second. A king? Say what? Like with a huge crown and like a giant throne and all that other awesome king stuff? Yes, exactly. You see, Jesus is the king of everything. As a matter of fact, the Bible tells us that the earth is the Lord's and everything in it. If we look at Revelation again, we can see a time when Jesus had a message for seven churches. These churches were doing some good things, but they were also doing some bad things as well. So as the leader of the church, Jesus had to correct them. He told them that they needed to listen to his word. You see, Jesus' word, the Bible, it's not a suggestion, but rather it's the commands of a king. And these commands, they're not meant to hurt us or to stop us from having fun, but rather they were given to us with our best interest in mind. And this is why we listen to Jesus. We listen because he's the king of everything and he wants what is best for us. Okay, so you're telling me that Jesus isn't just a teacher, but he's actually our king? Oh man, I had no idea that Jesus was so awesome! That's right, Jesus is awesome. 
And this is exactly what I was talking about with Old Man Jenkins. You need to listen to him because he owns his yard and everything in it. The same works with Jesus. Because he is the king of everything, we need to listen to him. Oh, that's so cool. Thanks, Wyatt. I'm going to do my best to listen next time. Uh, and speaking of listening, do you hear something? At, actually, I do. It sounds like a bunch of angry cats. <gasps> oh, what? man, oh, man, oh, man. It's old man Jenkins' cat, Robert. <laughs> he's come back for revenge, and he's brought friends. Save yourself. You're young. Get out of here. Ah, they're everywhere. Ah! All right, I'm, I'm going to go help Watson. I'm, I'm coming, buddy. I still know karate. <laughs> well, what a morning we've had together. Had a lot of fun building crowns together with you, doing a memory verse game, singing some worship songs together. Um, it is so good to be back uh, and diving into week 40 of SCF Kids Online. But I want you guys to remember, if you got anything out of today, always remember that Jesus is our King. Let's pray. Lord God, we confess that we're like the Israelites. Sometimes we look around at what others have and we want it too. We don't always trust your good plans. Like King Saul, we're tempted to make excuses for why we sin. We think our plans are better than yours. Lord, forgive us. And thank you for providing Jesus, the perfect King. Amen.